The meta in Genshin Impact is honestly kind of stupid. In my opinion, any character can be made good, even if it takes more effort than other characters. For example, Razor can be a good physical DPS if you don't have a Eula, and can be a good driver for stuff like Hyper Bloom if you don't have a Raiden or Kuki, as well as also being a pretty serviceable Electro DPS. But despite how much I don't care about the meta, we can't ignore the best character in the game. You wanna know who I'm talking about? Just look at this tier list. Look at the top. Dory. I mean, what else can be said about Dory that hasn't already been said? Wait. What if I flip this around? Uh, well, what do I do with this built Dory now? You know what? I'm a man of my word. Every character can be good, and I'm going to prove it by playing Genshin back using only Dory. Here are the rules. I can only use Dory in battle. Any puzzles that require another element can be completed with another character. No fighting enemies in co-op, and all claymores are allowed. Just as a warning before we start, this video has spoilers for the Fontaine Archon quests. If you haven't done those yet and you don't want spoilers, do those first and then come back. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using only Dory. The journey starts with us getting two Dorys. Well, there's only one thing I can call this account. First, we need to do three domains, and the first was Amber's domain. Now normally in this domain, I trigger the Pyro Monument with Amber when I don't have a Pyro character, but here I tried out a skip you can do with the domain, and I actually got it, meaning I was able to skip the entire domain. Next is Kaya's domain, which I played normally, and it was no problem. I was able to jump over both the water pools with Dory first try, which was surprising because of the type of character she is. We'll call her character type Child. They're the slowest character type, which made this challenge a bit slower. Lastly was Lisa's domain, which we could entirely skip. That's the end of Mondstadt Act 1, and now we need to get to AR-10 to start Act 2. The thing I like to do during this AR grind is collect an Amaculae and do challenges for the Adventure Handbook. Doing that and a little bit of Ley Lines, we were able to get to AR-11. By the way, I don't know why I went to AR-11 instead of just AR-10. This gives us a free 10 pull. Debate club, perfect. All right, that guarantees us getting something we want. Sacrificial greatsword. Sacrificial greatsword moment. Okay. I will not admit that she is just the better Dory. Now let's start act two. We meet the worst Archon and go to Windrise to fight the Eye of the Storm. When it did this move, Dory was actually able to knock it down using her elemental skill. Next, we steal the Holy Liar and meet Diluc. Next, we infiltrate the Fatui base and everything was fine here, and the agent was absolutely electrocuted. Next, we need to find three Teardrop Crystals, and to get the first one, you need to fight a Ruin Guard. My physical damage basically does nothing, but our Electro damage did the job. The next one we get simply required us to open a chest, and lastly, the Domain. Everybody was easy, and the Pyro Abyss Mage's shield just disintegrated in the water. Now we can try to call the Valen. Then why do I see sadness in your eyes? Sadness that speaks of your yearning for this- That's the end of Act 2, and now we need to get to Air 18 to start Act 3. We unlock commissions, which will be a great source of adventure experience. I think now would be a good time to start heading to Samaru to get Dory's Ascension materials. While I'm over there, I also opened up the teleport waypoint next to my future that I don't want to face right now. The artifacts I had for her were two-piece Berserker and two-piece Adventurer. I don't want Adventurer, but I don't have enough good artifacts to have an instructor set, so I'll keep Adventurer for now. When we reach Air 15, we can ascend ourselves. The passive talent we get from this is definitely a passive talent. It's a character, isn't it? It's Zhang Ling. I've been saving pretty much them so I can spend them on Weapon Banner, and now that I have a 10 pole, let's do that. Really? Why three, and why are none of them good? We get the rest of the air experience we need from exploring Liyue, and now it's time for Act 3. The Hydro Abyss Mage's fight was pretty funny because I just permanently freezed it with these flowers. In Storm Terror's Lair, we need to activate three light actuators. None of the fights that were tied to these were any sorts of eventful, but at this point I started to make some more meat for Dory, which I did slowly throughout this challenge. Take your guess as to how much I had at the end. Lastly is the Valen. Dory absolutely destroys his shield and does about the same with his health bar. Needless to say, she obliterated him. But what's hard work without a little remuneration? 
With that being said, Dory bought the entire church and renamed it the Divine Dory Church. That marks the end of Act 3. Now we need to get to AR-23 to start Liwa Act 1. I did a lot of random things during this air grind. I did Kaya story quests, ley lines, domains, commissions, and the Chi of Yore. I took a break from that to do some Spiral Abyss. We didn't get anything interesting from that, so I moved on to more world quests in Liwa, and now it's about time I should fight the Electra Regisfine. Let me explain to you why this Regisfine is worse than any other Regisfine. It has more attacks and is stronger, and Dory can't knock it down because she can only deal physical and electro damage. There's also this move that deals a large amount of damage that we can't dodge, and the only way to dodge it is by using the iframes your burst gives when you use it. Our Dory doesn't generate much particles, so we have to tank a few hits before healing ourselves with our burst. It's a very slow battle, and it took 10 minutes, which is ridiculous. Please give me two... Yes! We don't have to do it again! Random side note, I took so many pictures of Dory. Can you blame me? She's silly. We also fight the Primo Geova ship, and it was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Funny to think that the normal Geova ship is harder than the Primo Geova ship in these challenges. We also get to Friendship 2, which gives us Happy Dory! Soon after, we reach AR-23, and we're able to start Liwe Act 1. We go to the right of Dissension to meet our idol, but when we make it there, he fucking dies. Now we have to tell all the Adepti about his death. Dory's grieving, and you're sending her on errands. First was Mooncarver, and because of his buff, we were always able to have our lamp out. Next is Mountain Shaper, and we very quickly find this guy's brother. Next is Cloud Retainer, and we have to make her some food for her, which includes MORE MEAT! When we actually get inside the domain, we were able to skip it entirely by jumping off this tree. Lastly is Zhao. He wants almond tofu and not more meat, so he's way less cool than Cloud Retainer. When we fought the Ruin Hunter, for some reason he flew up into the air really fast and I waited for so long for him to drop down. For some reason our troubleshooter suits don't knock him down, so I just had to wait. He was in the air for over a minute, and when he came back down, he was automatically destroyed. That marks the end of Act 1, and now we need to get to Air 25. To do this, we went to Dragonspine. I haven't explored here at all, and this place is notorious for giving you a lot of stuff to explore. And explore we did for many crimson gates and chests. We also raised the Skyfrost nail while we were over there. You want to know something funny about the characters with the child model? They can't make it to the Skyfrost nail. Yeah, they're actually too short to trigger the animal boost that leads you up to the Skyfrost nail. Could Hoyoverse just made it a little bit closer? We do some more exploring, and then pull a Linny and do some magic. Just, 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 just end it. <sighs> cool. All just for Black Cliff Slasher. Yes, I really spent all that money just for a weapon. I don't care what you might think, this weapon is amazing. It gives crit damage while also having the side effect of giving us an attack boost when we kill an enemy. And you know Dory, being the top of meta that she- oh wait, yeah, she kills a lot. Oh yeah, we also have the instructor set now. We've had this for a while, but I never found a good time to bring it up. A few more commissions and we're at Air 25 and ready to do Liwe Act 2. But the game said nuh uh and forced me to do the Ascension Domain. It was really easy. All that were in there were Hilly Trolls and Minor Trolls. Man, they really nerfed the Ascension Domain. I kinda want them to bring the old one back to be honest. We meet Zhang Li, who might be somehow connected to Morax. I don't know, Dory just has a hunch. We go to boil some rocks in the pot of Mondstadt, and Dory was able to smite down all the hilly trolls. Next is the Granny's Teapot, and all that were in there were some slimes, which is no problem for a Giga Chad like Dory. Lastly, we need to go to the Guizhong Ballista to hunt down the Cocoa Goat, but we get interrupted by some treasure hoarders, and if you know Dory, she hates treasure hoarders, so she doesn't only kill them, she mutilates them. Now we get to finally talk to Zhongli one-on-one -on -one and ask if he's the real Morax. Never mind, come on, gone you! That's the end of Act 2, and now we need to get to AR-28 to start Liu Act 3. What I did for this AR grind was I did almost every single story quest that I hadn't done already. These were Diluc's story quests, Hey! You sleep when I say you can sleep! Amber's story quest, Razor's story quest, Lisa's story quest, and Singcho's story quest. After all those, I fought the Electro Red to find some more. It's so brutally long and not fun at all, but it is doable. I only had to do it twice, so it wasn't horrible. 
we do some more leeway exploration, then finishing off with some domains. Now we are air 28 and we can start act 3. We trigger the animal mechanism in the mountains with Lynette, fall off, and then go to fight the Milith at the Guizhong Ballista. To be honest, Milith, it's really embarrassing that the military force of Liyue got destroyed by a child. It was so big. Next we meet with Ningguang to potentially talk about buying out the Jade Chamber. But that's short lived and we go to talk to the man that we suspect to be Morax and he tells us to sing this with flowers. I love Mora and Mora loves me. I make Mora and it makes me happy. La 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 la. This fight is an example of why I really like playing Dory in this challenge. They hit me a lot, but I'm easily able to heal it all back. Sadly, this won't be the case forever. Next is Child, and he's looking to mess with the corpse of Morax, and we cannot allow that. So Dory basically does an equivalent electric chair to Child. He survives, though, and summons a giant sea serpent, and now we gotta deal with that. Talk about first world problems, am I right? Of course, Dory, being the girl boss she is, absolutely destroyed both the Fatui and Osile. Actually, something funny about this is that she did amazing before she even got her buffs. I think we can all call this a certified Dory moment. We discover that Zhang Li is actually Morax, and then we buy out the Yujing Terrace because we can't buy out the Jade Chamber because... You know. That's the end of Act 3. Now we need to get to Era 30 to start in Azuma, as well as do the Dane's Eve quests. Electro is probably the best element to have for these quests besides Animo. It works well with taking down all the Abyss Mage shields besides the Electro one, but there are none in these quests. However, the final fight of We Will Be Reunited was the first battle to give us some trouble. It's pretty hard to dodge the Abyss Herald, the Hydro Abyss Mage, and the Pyro Abyss Mage all at the same time. But once I took care of the Abyss Mage, it was just a 1v1 against the Abyss Herald, which is trivial. After that quest, I get the best picture of Dory and rob people of their Coppolato Lotuses because I need them to ascend. Once we do that, we can start the Inazuma Prologue quest. We weren't allowed to be the Giga Chad Dory for the tournament, but for the other fights, we were allowed to be Dory. Both the Slimes and the Treasure Hoarders were not difficult. And that's the end of the prologue quest. Now we can start the real deal in Inazuma quests. We arrive in Inazuma and we have to run around retail for a while and then do the transport mission. Unlike a certain other challenge, this was pretty easy. Still, I have mental scars from Nomura. Way later in the quest, we have to break somebody out of jail. Once again, another military force being taken out by a child. Come on, Town Neural Commission. Step it up. That's the end of Act 1 and now we have to do Ayaka's and Yoimiya's story quest. Each literally having nothing to cover, so let's move on to Act 2. First, we have the most cinematic fight of the entire playthrough. The Electro Archon versus the Raiden Shogun. Honestly, this wasn't that bad. We can't deal any Electro damage to her, but our physical damage is perfectly fine. This fight is also just an endurance test, which made it easier as well. Next, we fight the Tenryo Commission soldiers and meet the Virgin. Afterwards, we go to the Resistance Camp to do the archery demonstration. Now, the archery demonstration might be possible with Dory, but I am not going to wait for that to happen. I have better things to do, so let's just pull out Kale. I did make sure to finish off the last one with Dory, though, so she still kinda did it. Next are the fights at the front lines, and these were all easy as you would expect. That marks the end of Act 2. Act 3 starts with us cleaning out some Ronin around Watatsumi Island, which goes well. Afterwards, we go to the Electro Monuments to fight the Lava Troll. I was worried that Dory wasn't going to be able to trigger the Electro Monuments, but she was able to, which is kind of impressive. Everyone get a hand for Dory. Next was the Delusion Factory, and despite how we got our first death of the playthrough, it was for the most part easy. Except for the Electro Hammer guy near the end. This guy always has to be so slow in every challenge. Maybe we should just do a solo challenge with the Cryo characters, just so this guy wouldn't be as annoying. We do the anti-ride mid-gun training, and then... Oh my god! It's Sayu! Next we have to kill some more Terminal Commission soldiers and they still can't take down a child- You know what? What's the point of having these militaries if they can't even defeat a child? They should just disband. Next is Senora, and this was really easy. It's once in a blue moon that this fight is even the slightest bit of hard. Both phases were comical. Lastly, we have to fight Raiden Midgun. It's pretty much impossible to lose in this fight, which means this was easy. She hit us a lot, but we quickly healed her away with the buffs that we get in Phase 2 and our Burst. Dory then buys the Tenshikaku, and that's the end of Inazuma. We need to complete the Chasm World Quest to be able to start the Dane's Leaf Chasm Quest. But before I do that, I'm going to fight the Electro to find some more. It took 4 runs, which took a while, but they were pretty much the same as before. After that, I decided to do some artifact grinding for Mar Chassis Hunter and Golden Troop. I'll really take either of these artifact sets, and we ended up getting 2-piece Mar Chassis Hunter. 
We also take some more Copper Lot of Lotuses from other players. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting. Now I start to do the Chasm World Quest, which I'm not going into because of the Chasm World Quest. By the way, in 4.3, they're making my favorite change to the game yet. Making it so you can do the Dane's Live Chasm Quest without doing the Chasm World Quest. It is literally the best. And now I can't wait for 4.3. Back to the challenge. We can do the Dane's Live Chasm Quest now. Things were going fine up until the Abyss Lector, who just had to be Electro. <laughs> It really wasn't hard, the fight was just long, 7 minutes to be exact, which could be a lot worse, but it's still pretty bad. But that's not the end because there's another Electro Abyss Mage later. Jeez, that's annoying. Whatever, let's move on to the next challenge. THERE'S ANOTHER GODDAMN ELECTRO Abyss Mage! I suppose this quest is just a quest made to infuriate Dory. Either way, we get done with that and ascend Dory and then to the Ascension Domain. There's still another healer chosen Mita Churls, but this time was a bit more difficult. Why could that have been? Let me look at my character- Oh, talents. Also, where second passive talent is a little wordy, so let me break it down for you in Razor language. <clears throat> Cannon. Shot. Energy. Free energy recharge. Anything for even Dory is a treat, so we'll take it. Once we get our talents up, we get the last few artifact replacements we need before starting Sumeru. We start Act 1 by clearing out a withering zone. Dory may have a thirst for more, but she's also an environmentalist. The fungi there were easily taken out, and next was the Dream Domain. The enemies here are also pretty simple. Next we go to Sumeru City to get our Akasha Terminal, and then go to Port Olmos. We meet all hate them, and then... Wait. Is that who I think it is? Is that the Divine Dory Sangama Bay? I must get her autograph- Oh wait, yeah I am Dory. Still, double Dory. Later we fight some fungi who were destroyed, and then at the dock we fight some Maramites, who are pretty much the real enemy of Dory. Treasure hoarders? <laughs> Never heard of them. Next end of Act 1, and now it's time for Act 2. And there's nothing to go over here besides this one fight, so we'll transition to it with this Dory walk. The only fight in this act was against some Maramites, and interestingly, the fight ended up going inside of this house. Now it's time for Act 3. We meet the Doctor and fight some more Aramites in the forest who are also easy. Take it out. The d**k. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Later in the desert we fight some Rift Hounds, and the first phase was weak to Electro, so they were easy. The second phase was a bit more painful because they weren't weak to Electro, but it was still not too bad. That's the end of Act 3. In Act 4, it starts with us fighting some more Aramites. At the Elizabeth Hospital, we fight some Hilly Trolls and a Lava Troll. Both of them were pretty easy, and the Law Troll was even Geo, so we could take down its shield really easily. In the King Deseret Domain, I rediscovered my hatred for the Dendro Flying Fungi. They would not get down, and would constantly shoot me with Dendro shots. It was painful to say the least. That's the end of Act 4, and lastly is Act 5. We once again start out by fighting some more Aramites, and we even had helpers, so this one was really easy. At Party's DI, there were some Fatui members. Despite the fact that it had two Electro Hammer guys, it really wasn't that bad. Soon after that, we meet. A bona fide god. After that is a lot of plot, but once that's over, we can start the Deus Foundry. All the enemies in here are for Tui based, but they still have a lot to work with, but for some reason, they put three Electro Hammer guys. Mahoyo, might I ask, why? Why do you love this enemy so much? Overall, this domain wasn't too bad, it just took quite a bit. Lastly is Scaramouche. Despite the fact that he has 70% electro resistance, this was easy. When we made it to the one-shot move, Dory couldn't take them down because they're immune to electro, so we sacrificed Nahida to it. Dory is more valuable either way. I mean, look at this tier- oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lastly is the Polluted Zone. The Rift Hounds were once again painful, but not horrible. On the boat were some hilly trolls, and they were pretty easy as well. Same goes for the electro Law troll. Dory then buys out the Academia, and that marks the end of Sumeru Act 5. Now we have to get to AR-40 to start Fontaine, and also complete Curry Barrett. Before we can even think about doing Curry Barrett, we need to fight the Electro to find some more. It's really not hard, it's just such a long fight, and we had to fight it so many times because we needed 12 boss drops from it. We automatically unlock Curry Barrett when we complete Sumeru Act 5, so let's do that. 
All the enemies in here are pretty basic, and the Cryo Herald was also pretty simple, despite me not knowing its attack nearly as well as the Hydro Herald. That's what the mask is! Now we just need to get to Era 40, and using our commission keys, we can unlock some more story quests, which will make it easier. The quests we do are Klee's story quest, Jean's story quest, Venti's story quest, and finally complete Zhangling's story quest. With doing all of that, we're at Air 40 and we can start Fontaine. We meet Linny and Lynette at Romaritine Harbor, and Furina also shows up, but then just kinda dips. We go to the court of Fontaine where we meet Child, who decides to take the fight for us, even though Dory could've taken it completely on her own. After that, we go to Opera Eclaise to watch Linny and Lynette's magic show. We also meet Nivile there, and for some reason I feel like Dory and Nivile would get along and nobody can convince me otherwise. Their show goes pretty bad, and by that I mean someone dies. Now we need to be Linny and Lynette's attorneys, which to cut a long story short, we team up with Navia and she helps us to clear their names. That's the end of Act 1. Act 2 starts with us having a meal with Navia before passing out in front of a fountain and waking up to a war zone. Cloran saves us and all of a sudden we're teaming up with Navia to solve another case. We go around looking for information and that leads us to a domain. In this domain there are a lot of Gardamax and most of them are completely fine until these two bullies. <laughs> you big b Whenever this guy shot out his missiles, there was only one option. Run. Because in tandem with the Electro Gardamax, I could not dodge both of them at the same time, so I just had to run. It was a very slow back and forth, but I did get the best of it. At the end of the domain, we were able to find enough evidence to convict this guy of dissolving people. Man, Fontaine's an interesting place. He gets deemed guilty, but the Oratrice Mechanique Danalise Cardinal deems the ginger guilty as well. Which leads to him having a temper tantrum and then being stepped on by Nubile. It should have been me! But before I could finish those Arkham quests, I was interrupted by another quest, and I got kinda mad. So you're telling me the quest location is located. It's currently involved in other quest. It, the quest being this. Okay, I'll go do it. It's all the way over here! It's over here! Either way, after we do that, we can complete Act 2. Next is Act 3 and 4, which is interesting. I could go over all these quests, but there's basically nothing to talk about because there's no combat in it. I'll just go over the basics. We're in jail and we're investigating the child's disappearance. Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet are also there doing the same thing. Wario the Slay finds us out and Linny gets shot. Yeah! However, it was all part of the plan because everyone's fine and we're ready to hold back the primordial seawater. Warrior the Slade looks super fucking cool for an entire cutscene, but that's nothing compared to Nubulae doing his job but better. Oh yeah, and in between that, we also had a conversation with Fiorina and Arashino. Basically, Arashino says Fiorina is shit and should give up. After taking back up on everybody, that's the end of Act 4. Lastly is Act 5. Act 5 starts with us realizing that Poisson was flooded. Sucks to suck, Navia. We disregard that and head into some ruins. In the first room, there's some hilly trolls and a hilly troll rogue. They weren't too bad and weren't able to do much to us. You know what was able to do much to us? The floor here is insane. We'll ignore that, and later in the domain we meet Nibile. We run into the reason why this is the scariest domain in all of Genshin Impact. Not because of any of the enemies, but because it's literally Bowser's final boss from Super Mario 3D Land. In the middle we have to fight three Mida Trolls, which wouldn't be too bad if they didn't get you stuck in the corner with their spinning axe move or something. At the top we have to fight a Ruin Guard and two Hilly Troll Rogues. I could not for the life of me focus my attacks on only one of them. No matter who I attack, the other enemies would just constantly be trying to attack me, and deal a lot of damage in the process. I used a lot of healing items in this battle, and mostly targeted the Hydro Rogue because it was the easiest one. That made things more manageable and we took out the rest of them. Soon afterwards we put Fiorina on trial. We convict her of not being the real Archon, and it turns out we were right. She's sentenced to death, but then the all-devouring Narwhal appears. We were able to force it back into its hole soon enough, and now Fiorina and Fossilor plot. Basically, Fossilor cursed Fiorina to be the Archon for 500 years, and Fiorina's been living a horrible life because of it. But before any of that, the Gardamax give us more troubles! The military forces of the regions were fine, but these robots are the things that give us trouble? Either way, Fossilor gets executed, and now it's time to fight the all-devouring Narwhal. To be honest, this fight was kinda underwhelming. I know this fight gets cut down for the Archon Quest's sake, but you literally can't die in this fight, so there was no tension. But I still think that the All Devouring Narwhal is an awesome boss. With the Narwhal defeated and Child being yeeted, oh my god I rhymed. That marks the end of Fontaine Act 5. That means that we completed Genshin Impact using only Dory. Oh yeah, and she also bought out the Operative class. 
I think I've proved that Dory is amazing. Now let's place her on the tier list of characters who have been solo and see how good her performance was. Oh. Yeah, I hate to say it, but she's going in low kind of difficult. There were always nagging issues throughout the entire playthrough, like the electro vine, her talents, her artifacts, and the entirety of Fontaine was pretty slow. I won't ignore that she did really well for a long time, she just really started to slow down. It's like the opposite of Hazo only. For the people who haven't seen it yet, this is what the December schedule looks like, and next is Sayu only. One of my favorite characters. Oh yeah, I ended up with 31 more meat. It could have been more if I cared about buying cooking materials from the shops. I'll leave you with that. Oh, 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 oh